Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Thanks for coming back and joining us, Fading Memories listeners. I have something special for you guys today, and I have been wanting to talk to this person for, I think, about three years, but help me welcome Lewis. He is the creator of Jelly Drops. Thanks for joining us, Lewis. Great to be here. Thanks very much for having me. So you created this product because your grandmother became severely dehydrated and ended up in the hospital. So do you want to tell us about her and how all this, how Jelly Drops came to be? Yeah, yeah. Usually I like to start by introducing my my grandma, like you say, my grandma, Pat. Um, usually I call her my, my chief research partner. Um, so she had dementia for about seven years. But a, a few years ago, uh, her condition started to dramatically decline. Um, she was becoming more and more unresponsive. And like you said, she was actually rushed to hospital and you know, the family pretty much told to expect the worst. I had um, relatives flying over from, from Canada um, and it wasn't until she was at hospital they realised she was actually just severely dehydrated. And thankfully, after 24 hours in IV fluid, she was back to her normal happy self and went on to enjoy good quality of life for years after. But that's what really sort of alerted me to the issue of dehydration and how severe it could be for, for someone with dementia. It could be severe for any of us, but it's obviously worse for somebody who already has some sort of impairment with their cognitive abilities. But yeah, no, I live in California. It can get quite warm here and you do have to be really careful not to, you know, get dehydrated. And, you know, so that's why you always see people wandering around with water bottles. I don't know if that's a thing over there in the UK, but it is over here. Yeah. So a cup of tea, uh, but I think, well, that's, like, that's like, my like, other drink of choice. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would be a severe situation for anyone, but I I think, you know, because grandma had dementia, actually, you know, it went unnoticed. People assumed it was her dementia that was contributing to her decline, but actually it was, a, you know, dehydration and, you know, falling short just by a bit every day for a few days. And it can sort of lead to that downward spiral that made it you know, so serious for her. So tell me, so you were 18 at the time of this happening? Uh, no, I was 23. Uh, oh, okay. when grandma was in hospital um i, I think um <laughs> so i was actually at university at the time doing a, a a course called innovation design engineering which um basically gave me um not the opportunity to sort of work on any project i would like for, for graduation um <laughs> so it was at the time grandma was sort of struggling with hydration i thought if, if nothing else it would be good excuse to say a bit more of her, but I decided to try and, you know, help, help her and see, see if there's anything I could, um, you know, understand and, and support her with. So I went and actually sort of lived in a care home for about a month in total to um, speak to the residents, the families of residents and, and the carers um, to really understand how I could help, really. And uh, it was through that I, I came up with the insights that sort of led to Jelly Drops. That's awesome. What else did you learn from that month or so of living in the care home? Because that that was an ambitious decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I started actually before I went by speaking with a dementia psychologist to understand you know, why people with dementia may not drink. And I didn't realize, but it turned out there's loads of reasons. People may no longer feel thirst. They may not equate drinking with quenching thirst. They may not recognize cups or have the dexterity to use cups. So, you know, knowing that I was sort of, realized that many people eventually could find that confusing and i went to you know see if how people you know got on with drinking and i saw it you know first time people perhaps falling asleep in the chair with their drink um sometimes putting food in their drink or pouring the drink away but the biggest problem that i found was uh, many refused help to drink and you know mm. typically when i was sort of trying to help my grandma drink and she wouldn't understand it was you know very difficult and um yeah, it was confusing for her and it just took a long time to get, you know, not very much sort of hydration uh, into her. And, you know, even with all the will in the world, sometimes it can, you know, it can be very difficult. Um, so I started looking at eating habits and here I found actually quite a bit more independence, especially with finger foods. It was more intuitive and the removal of cutlery helped reduce distractions, I found. Um, it's also more sociable. Got more like to eat when those around her eating and would often try and share her food, which was nice. Um, but... 
you know, it's sometimes still quite difficult to get people in the care home with dementia to engage with their foods. I found um, that was, however, unless I, I had some sweets. So you know, generally I'd walk around <laughs> the care home and most of the residents would ignore me, which is fair enough. But if I had a box of chocolates in my hand, then suddenly everyone's your best friend and they're taking a handful and speaking to you. So that's, that's what gave the idea, but it's a solid form of hydration in, in the form of a treat. That's funny. My mom needed, in the last nine months of her life, she needed an ultrasound. And I don't know about the doctors over there, but over here, they are not trained on dementia, Alzheimer's care at all. Heart, it's about four hours in their entirety of their instruction. So pretty minimal. And the uh, radiologist was, they said, now, you know, your mother needs to drink 32 ounces of water. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I did manage to get quite a bit in her just as we were driving. I, I kept saying, oh, you know, the doctor needs you to drink this water. And I'd hand her the, the cup with the straw. And But yeah, it's, it, you know, after a while she was getting irritated with me. Yeah. Which I don't blame her because, you know, if she didn't think she needed it and I'm pushing it on her. So it was not particularly uh, an easy thing to do so I can relate to your experiences. But it's hard to eat soup with your hands, too. That's a, a nice, you know, liquid hydrating meal, but a little difficult to eat with your fingers. Yeah. So then, so you got, you did all your research and then you went back to school and what, what happened after that? Cause I'm well, super fascinated and I love it how carers become innovators in this right now, in this time that we're living in so many people doing things like podcasts and writing and apps and you know, you created jelly drops, which is obviously the most unique thing I've had people do. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I think you. Know, I think it's fantastic. You know, so many people, you know, coming up with ideas and you know, putting information out there to help support other people in the same situation. You know, like what you're doing yourself. So, I think you know that's really fantastic, and uh, a lot of that would have been very useful. Uh, you know, during during this phase as well. But um, yeah, I think you know, like you said, it can be. It can can be quite difficult for people when you're you're trying to get them to drink something they don't really understand. It can be quite frustrating um, for them. But really, the idea of jelly drops was it wasn't necessarily meant to be um, you know sweets that is um, you know overly medicalized or have any stigma around them. They're really designed to help people with dementia to hydrate independently, but also with dignity. You know the sweets or sweets that anyone can enjoy they just happen to be designed for people in dementia in mind and you know that really helps i found as sort of a social pop as well so you know you can share them and sometimes it'd be quite difficult to have a conversation with grandma um but if you have like a prop that you can sort of talk over and share then i found that helps so you know uh, like oh you like strawberry i like orange and you know point to them and eat them together sort of thing um and that you know turned what could be quite a frustrating thing into, you know, potentially, you know, the highlight of the day for, for some people. So tell us about the, obviously you just, you didn't go back to the university lab and just poof, they, they existed. What was the, um, the design for lack yeah. of a better term? What was that process like? Yeah. So, well, I, I went back and started making sort of prototypes of packaging and, um, the sweets themselves molds to make the sweets and there's a few features of jelly drops that uh i had in mind to help people with dementia engage with them so initially when i was with a box of chocolates perhaps the chocolates were almost depressed in the in the plastic trays i don't know if it's the same over there but and often these sort of merge into the tray that like the plastic might be black and the chocolate's brown so there's not very good color sort of um contrast so the idea of jelly drops is they stand proud and you can easily sort of pluck them out of the tray or in the pots that are more uh, recent, you can sort of scoop them out of the pot, but the colours of the, themselves of the, of the sweets are, are very bright and against the packaging, which is quite plain, it really helps give that contrast for people with perhaps limited vision. Um, and yeah, there's a few features of the trays that sort of, yeah, were really sort of designed to help with the engagement. So the variety of colours and flavours help with you know, the sense of choice and um, the same with the snack pots now. We have multiple different flavors in, in different pots, um, which also helps people choose the flavors they like the most. Um, but yeah, I think, so initially I developed the first prototypes of jelly drops, um, consulting with sort of uh, dietitians and nutritionists 
um, to understand what sort of properties you know, would be best to have. Um, and then with that initial prototype, I went and visited my grandma again. And um, you know, I was very fortunate that you know, she made, she engaged them straight away. She sort of knew exactly what they were and, you know, was picking them up and eating them and enjoying them. And in the first 10 minutes, she actually ate seven drops, which, you know, for me to get her to drink the equivalent, you know, potentially would have been hours of me sort of sitting with her and not very enjoyable for grandma, but grandma was really sort of engaged with this um, prototype. And um, I, I actually videoed that first um, encounter and uh, that was sort of part of my project. But then when I was coming to graduation, I applied to a competition and I put that video online. And uh, within a few weeks, it had been sort of taken and it gone you know, viral, basically, and had about 100 million views and it's sort of gone all around the world and um, you know had a massive response in, in the US specifically. Um, so I had about I quickly set up a website and had about fifty thousand people join that. About thirty thousand of those were in the, in the US, um, <laughs> and we're sort of getting emails every day from hundreds of people asking, you know, where we where can people get hold of them? And at this point, I was still making them in my sort of student flat. So oh, dear. Um, quickly, <laughs> quickly um, decided to you know try and um, scale up as, as quickly as possible. And um, so the seven drops that she initially ate approximately how much water in ounces is that so a tray has uh, about 10 ounces in it uh and the tray has got 24 drops so it's about uh that's about a, a third it's about, of that isn't it so it's about, about three four ounces, four ounces three four ounces that's not terrible and it didn't take yeah, any think, effort <laughs> on your part yeah, i think i think that you know, if key jelly ups are not designed to sort of replace fluids for people they're just another tool to help people sort of get up to that sort of threshold and i think often in when we've been talking to care homes and stuff in the uk it, people sort of significant um fall short of their sort of minimum threshold that they're aiming for not by uh all that much sometimes you know two three hundred mil um but you do that sort of consistently and then that you know can sort of lead to the de deterioration so Joe are just aiming to sort of be an extra thing that can help people hydrate um and reach you know get as much hydration as, as possible that makes sense in the care home that my mom lived in they had breakfast then there was a snack pretty sure there was a morning snack and then lunch and then an afternoon snack and then dinner and i don't know if they had a snack after dinner I wasn't generally there past dinner time. And so you, you have the opportunity to replace, they would do things like popsicles, which are, mm. you know, like basically kind of, kind of like a frozen jelly drop, but not quite. Yeah. Um, what else did they do? Sometimes they did ice cream, but they did popsicles a lot when it was hot. Mm -hmm. And so the jelly drops would be a good alternative in the colder months because you know, I I particularly like to have ice cream and hot tea in the winter because I like both, and I don't like yeah. to be cold. Nice. <laughs> but I'm weird, so <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. That yeah. Sounds good for me. But yeah, I think you know, ice pops are also something we see used uh, occasionally in some of the homes and, and hospitals that have been trialing with as well. Um, our weather's probably not quite as good as your weather, but um, I think, yeah, certainly they, they can definitely help as, as well. Um, but, you know, a lot of people like to have jelly drops, you know, with ice cream or as part of their dessert as well. So that you can sort of mm -hmm. mix and match them with other things that can also, you know, support hydration. Well, so now you're going to have to uh, encourage people to come up with like jelly drop recipes that you can share. <laughs> yeah. Or has that I happened mean, look, already? That'd be fantastic. I think, you know, we get, we're very fortunate to have a, a really engaged community and people share you know, lots of videos and, and, and pictures of people enjoying jelly drops and you've definitely, you know, seen things like that. People sharing tips about how they share them with their loved ones. And then, um, yeah, it's really, you know, great to see so many people use them in, in such a sort of variety of ways and, and contexts as well. So my mom had a friend in the memory care residence she lived in who was, it was, it was funny. She was tall and slender and because of her memory issues, forgot that she would eat a dessert. So this woman would eat two and three desserts at a time, which my my just thinking about eating three desserts, I gain weight. So it was very, very frustrating to watch this tall, skinny woman just gobble down dessert. So I think she'd probably eat like a whole tray of those things and be happy as a lark. Now, yeah. they don't have a lot of sugar in them, right? Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. 
These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. I started using a product that all you caregivers need to try. I started taking AG1 from Athletic Greens after my workouts because I needed a quick and healthy way to refuel my body. While there are lots of options, most don't taste great, and I don't eat or drink things that don't taste good. So what is AG1? Well, with one delicious, mildly tropical flavored scoop, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to fuel you for your crazy day ahead. AG1 helps support mental clarity throughout the day and you know how important brain health is to this gal. It has over 7,000 five-star reviews and costs less than $3 a day. And you know your time is worth more than three bucks. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. I'm sure you're aware that there may be a connection between poor gut health and dementia, so this is another way to help protect your brain. As caregivers to someone with a cognitive impairment, this is also an excellent way to get much needed nutrition into someone who is slowly losing the ability to eat. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, which is also important for brain health, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now back to our conversation. No, so they're actually sugar-free. So they're sugar-free, vegan, gluten-free. Um, and really from a diet point of view, tried to make them as inclusive as possible uh, on that front. Um, so I think a whole tray has around 39 calories in um, roughly. Um, so there's not really very many calories in them at all. I mean, they aren't 95% water, um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can eat as many as you like and, and, and people, <laughs> um, you know, people often do eat a tray you know, very, very quickly uh, when you get a bit of a taste of and even in the office when we're, we're working, uh, our team, you know, there's a few of us where we have them on the side and before you know it, the sort of whole tray is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's good to hear you guys like them too. So how yeah. many different attempts at making, well, from where you started to the end result, how many different attempts did it take to get to where you are now? Oh, um, <laughs> a lot. I think um, <laughs> you know, from initially coming up with the prototype, there was still a lot of work to do to sort of make it like a market-ready product that had all the attributes that we wanted. So, you know, initially we did have sugar in, and uh, my mum was a dentist, so she was quite keen to, you know, ha not have that in. And uh, I think especially, you know, for people with dementia, all hygiene can also be you know, um, something to to take care of. And um, you know, if people sort of develop aches in the in the teeth then it can be sometimes difficult to con convey that um so definitely didn't want to sort of contribute to to that um by trying to help with the hydration so yeah taking the sugar out was one thing but um having many of the attributes i just said about the vegan and the gluten-free as well um making them 95 percent water um all the different flavors and colors the texture um so i'm very, very fortunate to you know, worked with some great people to, to help develop that. Um, and even once we've launched, you know, we do everything in house. We have a sort of technical expertise in house and we've got production in house. So, um, a lot of the feedback we've had, we've we're sort of we're trying to be agile and act on as uh, to make jelly up the best it can be. So we've updated the texture to make them a bit more like a classic jello like texture, a bit more familiar, um, updated the flavors to make them stronger um and the shelf life and, and things like that and actually the new snack pots the drops are slightly smaller as well based on uh feedback from from working with um some of our care provider partners but also uh for, for customers and families of, of people living with dementia that's just amazing so you your grandmother had an issue you saw it as a way to finish your university career for lack of a better term and it just launched into this whole business. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, really it started out as like a, you know, project to, to help grandma. And, um, you know, from, from there, it was sort of blown away by the, the response from people, you know, 
really got us started to begin with was uh, just giving page was set up uh, on our behalf um to help sort of get us off the ground and and from there we um were very fortunate to be uh, to partner with the Alzheimer's society here in the uk which is the biggest uh, dementia charity in the uk we were the first company except on their accelerator program so we got you know really valuable insights through that and that really helped um sort of accelerate our our route to market and then have to develop the production process and you know build the build the space to be able to produce them um so yeah it was about 18 months from coming up with the first concept to launching in the uk which was sort of the summer of 2020 and then more recently uh you know, we're really excited to, to launch in the US because we, you know, we've had such great support over there and we you know we've really been going as fast as we can behind the scenes to sort of get it over there as soon as we as soon as we could. I know I was one of those people that were like, come on, we need this over here. It's like, and I have past no, we're, guests we're, yeah. and friends in the UK that was like, Can you guys buy me some of these and send them over here? Yeah, it was like I said, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. I yeah, it's probably a bit. I think I must have heard about you when that video went viral. At first, when you were talking about when you had the prototype with your grandmother, because it's been longer yeah. than two years that I've known about you. Because the last yeah, two years I have been a lot. Like the summer, of, summer of twenty eighteen, basically, was just after I graduated. Um, so yeah, it's taken about about three years and a bit more than three years to sort of uh, get over to the US. That doesn't sound terribly long i feel like you probably came up with this idea and do you feel like you've just your head has been spinning with just <laughs> all of this wonderful craziness since then well it's certainly been a uh, a journey and um <laughs> you know there's always a lot of stuff going on which is which is great and a lot of things to consider um but you know people like yourself that you know really given us such a fantastic response and support has really, you know, helped help that journey um, go on. And I'm very fortunate to have a work with a great team of people that are, you know, also passionate about what, what we're doing. So, um, yeah, it's certainly been, um, it's certainly been quite quick, uh, but, um, yeah, uh, it's not, it's not just me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's a lot of work for just one person. So where did you think your life was going to go before, Jelly Drops became an idea. You were almost done with university. What were what were your plans? Do you did you have kind of a set goal that Jelly Drops just brushed away? Um, well, I mean, before I did the design course, I my undergraduate was in civil engineering, um, so that was sort of my background before then. And then a lot of the projects I did whilst on that course were quite sort of engineering focused, I guess. Um, but the course really afforded me the opportunity to you know really work on something that you're passionate about so i thought um i did have a bit of teaching work lined up after and had another project on the course that was also getting um a good response that was also since spun out to 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 be a company um which actually tackled air pollution um so it was quite different to jelly drops um <laughs> but i really wanted to sort of give Give myself the chance to try and i guess uh move forward of something that i was working on on the course and i was just very lucky that you know jelly drops um you know had a, a very good response early on and it sort of allowed me to do that but um yeah i mean that was the the goal basically the, you know that would have been the, the best scenario if, if i could have just carried on working on something i'd sort of spent time developing on that course and yeah luckily it, it happened yeah that's just right time right place for the right idea it just you know I, i'm sure you didn't didn't see yourself doing this but i bet you it's definitely very rewarding because it's so important definitely and i think you know um you know early on when grandma has dementia and you know i wouldn't necessarily thought of myself as someone that could have helped it wasn't you know my expertise or uh, anything like that but um you know, I've been you know, fortunate to have that opportunity to spend a lot of time with her to to see if I could help and, you know, work with some great people that have expertise in that space also. So, um, you know, it's it's been, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it's worked out, you know, very well. I'm very happy with the situation and obviously <laughs> working on Jelly Drops and having worked on it initially with Grandma. And uh, that's why we're 
it's called Pattinson's Jelly Drops because uh, my grandma was called Pat Dickinson. So I sort of uh, mashed her names together to make Pattinson's. Um, so yeah, to work on that after working on it initially with grandma and um, seeing so many people enjoy it since is, um, yeah, I'm very fortunate. I feel very fortunate. That's wonderful. So where, now that you're, well, probably still trying to catch your breath from this whirlwind of of jelly drops, do you have any, <clears throat> excuse me, ideas of where else you might want to take that the product different options or yeah well i think uh, we you know initially we've launched the trays and now the snack pots um that you know work um suit perhaps people's different needs um but it's still geared towards hydration i think you know really jelly drops is um is something that can it's you know not nice to engage with and engaging and, and can deliver more benefits. So we're working on sort of a jelly drops plus, uh, which could possibly include vitamins, nutrients, uh, protein, fiber, things like that. Um, so really, uh, I guess getting more benefit to the people that enjoy them. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's something our customers today have, um, you know, highlighted as, you know, something that they'd like to, to see. So um, that's what we're sort of working on at the moment. That sounds like it might be a little more tr- challenging than the initial design. Potentially. I think, you know, we, like I said, we've got a good, uh, good, t- good team and, um, you know, they're, they're um, really, um, yeah, knowledgeable in these areas. Um I think initially ninety-five percent water and having it in a in a sort of format that was to pick up um is sort of it it lends itself in some ways to be um you know a carrier of you know other benefits. So um yeah, I'm sure there'll definitely be some uh, technical challenges. Um, but I think um we're all we're quite sort of committed to, to trying to make them a reality. So ho- hopefully they won't be too far off. Any any chances of a chocolate flavored one? It's something uh, that I've thought about before, maybe like a chocolate covered one or something along those lines. Mm. Um, Ooh, that I think does sound good. All, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, certainly other flavors, uh, you know, uh, we, we have some other flavors we've been working on, um, which we're, we've been looking into. Um, so, yeah, there may be some new pack formats in the future, different colors, different flavors. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, there's there's quite a few interesting sort of ways ways it, it might go. That is interesting. It's like, I guess they would almost always have to be fairly sweet. You wouldn't necessarily want like vegetable flavored ones. Because I'm thinking for people who aren't big sweet eaters, I'm trying to yeah. think of a flavor for those those crazy folk. I like sweets. So <laughs> no, no vegetable so. flavored ones for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think certainly, yeah, pot- potentially. I think... Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we get a lot of suggestions from our community, which is you know really great. And um, yeah, I think um, potentially we may see some vegetable flavored ones down the down the road. But I think uh, the moment in the short term, it's probably more fruity sort of uh, f- flavors is what we've been looking at. Yeah, I guess you could do carrot. Those are a little bit sweet and pretty color. But yeah, no, there's a lot of fruits out there you can you can work with first. <laughs> And so what other things are you getting from this community that basically swept you into this this whole different path of life than you were expecting to go down? Where where well, are they leading you? Well, I think sort of in that direction that uh, of those other sort of things that the product could deliver is sort of the most frequent thing that we probably get um, asked for. Um, I think a lot of the insights that went into the snack pots were generated through talking to the community and um, working with people in the in the care sector and um, initial insights based on on the tray and how perhaps some people might benefit from you know slightly different format. You know, some of the things that went into that are perhaps if people aren't eat, you know eating too much, then a whole tray may be a bit overwhelming for some people. So that the, the smallest snack pots are more of a portion size that you can have sort of in one hit rather than you know, picking out throughout the day. Um, so I guess that's the sort of, that's the sort of um, feedback that we get that's, you know, super valuable for us and, you know, helps us sort of iterate on the product and, and make it, make it even better. So is the, 
snack sized? Are they are they smaller and in a smaller package, or just a smaller yeah, package? Uh, slightly smaller drops, yeah, um, and uh, in a smaller package. So six of the pots equals one of the trays, essentially. Um, so those snack pots are all the same flavor as well. Uh, and they have a, a longer shelf life, um, but it means that people can pick either sort of berry flavors or citrus flavors, whereas in the tray, you sort of get them all, which, you know, is great for, for a lot of people if they, if they like them all, but um, if people like to prefer to, to pick their flavors, then, then there's more of an option with a snack pot. Makes sense. So that idea was generated from the the community and was it, it was it a very big challenge to make them small? So, I mean, it sounds like not that big a challenge you know, make a smaller pop, make a different tray, but that's not necessarily the case. To to revamp sizing and packaging is that was probably another challenge. Yeah, well, you know, getting the sort of right packaging size and shape and fit, and how to, you know, uh, then ship that and uh, what that meant for production or changing all the processes, changing the the way we make them because uh, they're different drops essentially, even though they're made of the same uh, material. Um, you know, same recipe um but it was also an opportunity to sort of re um consider some aspects of the packaging so with the snack pots they're packed more densely so that helps with sort of um you know shipping and things like that um and it also it reduces the packaging we use so the snack pots have 50 percent less plastic on the packaging um and uh, just the sort of footprint of them uh, the volume of them is reduced so we've, we've able to sort of um, make um yeah advances on that side too <laughs> just just the learning never ends right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's often when you, yeah you do anything new i guess it's just an opportunity to sort of try and learn about all the, from all the feedback that we've had and sort of um yeah try and improve on it but there's often uh, many, many different angles to consider and sort of getting that all into sort of one thing uh is is the challenge but um you know it's a, a, a good a good challenge <laughs> definitely definitely a good challenge so do you have some like feedback stories from customers that you can share with us well yeah i mean there's loads and we've been really you know uh thankful to see somebody from the us even though it's been you know relatively early days it was, it was launching um there's areas on our website that have a lot of stories that people have shared pictures of people and we have a sort of community page um on our on our uk site and often on facebook people are posting stories but you know we get um you know stories sort of every day which you know is great i think if what some that uh come to mind or you know during the pandemic um when people weren't able to necessarily visit their loved ones who are in, in care homes here in the in the uk then often they would sort of send them the treats uh, and sort of know that that was sort of contributing, but they maybe often even share them through like a window because uh, you know, they weren't able to visit them, but you know, giving them a gift and sharing that was, you know, a way for them to sort of um, still feel sort of connected in a way and, and, and enjoy something together. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, we're very fortunate that um, people are very pr- proactive in, in sort of sharing those good stories with us and, you know, we're, we, we really love to hear them. I'm sure it keeps you going with all these uh, challenges of make them smaller and all the same flavors in one packaging. It seems like, as I mentioned a minute ago, seems like it would it would be simple and it's definitely not. I've not done manufacturing, but I've been a business owner my entire life. So it's I do recognize the challenges that your community is posing to you in their requests. So do you where so People need to order them through your website. Is that correct? Yeah. So they're available at jellydrops.us and they're available um, either the trays or the snack pots and they come in in value packs. So the trays are packs of seven and the snack pots are packs of 21 pots. Um, and they're either available for sort of a one-off purchase or on a subscription. Um, and I guess part of the benefit of the subscription for, for our, from our side is it allows us to sort of plan shipping and stuff often you know we've, we've had such a fantastic response we can sometimes sell out and uh subscribing is a you know a good way to sort of guarantee supply and allow us to plan uh but obviously also people uh benefit from that 
because it's something that people have often and the subscription makes it easier, but it helps save money too. So on the value packets for the trays, it's $10 less essentially for the value pack uh, by subscription. Um, so yeah, those are the two ways that people can buy and the two products that, that people can buy. Well, that link will definitely be in the show notes. I'll probably put the UK link in there as well because I do have quite an audience of listeners that are not US based. So I don't know. Are you shipping these to Canada yet? Uh, not yet, unfortunately, not yet. but it's something that we're looking into. I, I I hadn't heard that you were, so I thought I better double check because you know between UK and us, the, the US, it's like Canada is just right there. <laughs> Yeah, it's just next door. It's, um, yeah, I think it's certainly something we're, we're, we're looking at. And uh, I've got uh, quite a bit of family over in Canada as well, so I'd like to be able to <laughs> ship, ship it to them too. That makes sense. They're probably they're probably anxiously awaiting your uh, success in that that venture of your business. That sounds that sounds like like maybe you're not getting enough sleep because you got so many things to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well. No, I mean it's all it's all it's all good. I mean, uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot going on, but um, yeah, I think on that front, it, it's okay. <laughs> you're not you're not bored, that's for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, definitely not bored. Um, but um, yeah, it's the whole. It, like I said, yeah, I, I couldn't. Uh, I'm very grateful to be you know work on such such a, a personal and you know interesting thing, and um, you know helping get Jerry Lips out there is really uh sort of my main goal at the moment so um yeah it's all it's all good stuff uh even though it's a lot going on <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this has been fantastic do you have a last message for the listeners before i let you go off and do these 500 things that you're apparently doing today <laughs> well just yeah thanks very much for for watching and listening to say yeah about jelly drops um also, you know, if you want to try them, the jlops.us and, you know, word of mouth has been really such a fantastic um, way of getting the word out there for us. Um, so, you know, if you know of anyone that you know, think might benefit from them, please sort of uh, spread the word. Um, yeah, you know, we're very appreciative. Definitely. Well, like I said, the link is in the show notes. You guys can find that there. It will be on the new website that is currently still under construction, but better be done when this episode comes out or the web guy is in trouble. <laughs> and I very much appreciate this. It's like three years of waiting for you. It's finally like a dream guest come true. So <laughs> you probably <laughs> didn't even know that you were me. in that category. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, thanks very much for having me. And thanks for the patience on it as well. I mean, three years is <laughs> a long time. So, well, I no, knew they really weren't available it. here. So it's like, well, I'll wait. And then I saw postings on social media, you know, people that are, you know, in the United States, they're trying them, they're talking about them. I'm like, wait a minute, I've been trying <laughs> to talk to this guy for years. And then I think your publicist emailed me when another guest had to reschedule their recording because, you know, you can, there's only so many d hours of the day and she was running out of them and you snuck right in there. So it was, it, was, <laughs> it literally was her email. I need to reschedule email from your publicist. I'm like, whoa, this is meant to be. So <laughs> my mom always said, everything happens for a reason. And that yeah. was the reason. <laughs> well, I appreciate this. Best of luck. I'm going to order a package. We are having a, a pizza party dinner get together. And I want to get my neighbors and friends to try them and give feedback. So if it's all positive, which I expect it will be, It'll it'll be in the social media for this episode. So oh, <laughs> stay tuned for that. <laughs> and then we'll we'll share it with you guys as well. I oh, know, I really appreciate that. And uh, I had a barbecue a couple of weekends ago and I, I bought I bought some along with me and uh you yeah, know they went down well. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully they go down well there too. But no, thanks very much for having me and thanks also for you know all the work you do and the, the information you share to help support people, you know, with dementia and, and caring for them. So I no, really appreciate it. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.